Good morning, my name's Stacy, and my little bug's name is Amelia and we're taking over the Glow Dreaming Instagram page today. <coughs> you will have to bear with us though. Um, Em's on day 10 of a viral infection. Um, if so, if you have any questions, anything you particularly want to know, shoot me a inbox and I will try my very best to answer it. Um, but at the moment, I'm going to go fix my mum bun. I'm going to have my cup of coffee because normally mummy doesn't talk until the coffee has been had. But I will talk to you guys throughout the day. So I hope everyone has a good day and follows along with us. Bye. Okay, we've had a bit of a, a hectic morning. Em's still not 100%, so she's been extra sooky and just wanting, I guess, extra love and cuddles. So we're gonna come out here and I'm gonna put that there. And I'm just gonna go like this. So while she's sort of in a good mood, I thought that I'd quickly jump on. Hi! And quickly go through sort of endometriosis. So I was diagnosed when I was 22. Um, I, hi, have had six surgeries and number seven's probably not too far away because unfortunately after having M, things have gotten a lot worse and a few other issues have come to light that needs to be sorted. Um, I first sort of started having, I guess, painful periods was when, I guess I was 12. Yeah, you reckon I was 12? And, um, Things sort of just got a lot worse from there. So I used to, hi, hi. I pretty much spent days one to four of my period in bed, hugging up to three hot water bottles because my body just wasn't coping. And I would go to my doctors daily, sometimes twice a day for tramadol injections, just to sort of help ease the pain. Unfortunately, hospitals, oh really, hospitals aren't really, I guess, they know about endo, but in terms of how to treat flare-ups, they've got no idea. I have given up going to hospitals. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 You cheeky bum. Because I basically get accused of being a drug seeker and sent on my way. Oh, are you going to have a chat now? Oh, really? Are we going to go have a shower now? All right, we're going to go have a shower and we'll pick this back up later. But like I said, guys, if you've got anything you'd like me to talk about, let me know and we will try and cover everything. Yes, we will. Say ta-da. Say ta-da. Ta-da. Hospitals. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 You cheeky bum. Because I basically get accused of being a drug seeker and uh, sent on my way. Oh, are you going to have a chat now? Uh, oh, really? So I thought I'd do a little something different. I'm going to bring Luke into this. Hello. Um, bit of real dads of glow dreaming. I just thought I'd have him sort of sitting in the corner going, hey. Well, I did sort of talk about IVF. So I had to do IVF, obviously, for my endometriosis as well as my polycystic ovaries. And my child is about to go nuts because we've just taken the bottle off her to birth her. Um, um, <laughs> um, we were pretty lucky in terms of IVF cycles. Amelia was our second transfer. Unfortunately, we lost our first quite early. Um, that was our fourth miscarriage overall. We had been trying to have a baby for three and a half years before we turned to IVF. We did try other things before that I had medication I had 
my tubes um, cleaned out. Lukey boy had his manhood tested not once, not twice, but I'm pretty sure three times. No, it was twice. Twice? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, what was your favorite part? Handing it to a random person. The old lady or the young lady? Probably the young lady. The young lady? Yeah. Okay, cool. As weird as that is. I actually sat in one of the rooms opposite where he was while he was in there. And I just kept sending him messages like, can you hurry up? Hurry up. Please hurry up. So before we actually were able to start an IVF cycle, the hospital made us do home inseminations for six months, which was awkward, I think, for both of us. Because I would literally have to take an ovulation test in the morning. And if it came back positive, I would have to shoot Luke a message and be like, yo, you need to come home and do your thing into a cup. And specimen jar. Yeah, yeah. that was the, the nicer term, specimen jar. I was just going to go with cup. But it's as glamorous as it sounded. They gave us instructions. I had to lay on the bed. My feet had to go up. It was... Okay, that cut out and Luke had to go pee and Em's now decided that she wants to join in on the fun. But basically, um, we had no success, obviously, with the home inseminations as awkward and disturbing as they were. Um, I did have to go on about a two-week sort of injections and medicated cycle. In that time as well, they would also do blood tests to make sure that the medication was doing what it was supposed to um, and ultrasounds as well to make sure that I hadn't ovulated prior to when they actually needed me to ovulate. So they will control sort of when that egg is ready. When you do ovulate or when they make you ovulate, I'm going to stand you up here for the moment. Um, you're booked in, you go under general anesthetic and they remove all your eggs. I ended up with... 13 eggs yes. to start with. Um, we lost quite a few. I think we, no, by the time no. our first transfer came around, we had six eggs left. I believe I think right. she's just vomited on me. No, it's just... Oh, okay, no, we're good. Milk um, <laughs> um We did one transfer, which unfortunately didn't work. And then we had the second transfer, which is... This little gremlin, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's not in the mood, really. Um, I think the hardest part of IVF was the fact that for that for those two weeks, it controlled your life. Like I remember at that point, we were looking for how I don't know if you remember, we were house hunting, and I was due to take a pessary. For anyone who doesn't know what a pessary is, oh, it's I something that this. has to go internal yeah. so that was really fun so we had to find a really really deserted area and i had to do the pessary in the car because everything has to be timed if they say that it's three o'clock it has to be done at three o'clock um in terms of my pregnancy with amelia it was pretty easy going i didn't have morning sickness i think i had two or three days where i felt nauseous don't mind us. We're just jumping between who's holding our little Satan spawn, who's just Slash in a real, Angel. really good mood. We do love her, but we jokingly call her <sighs> Satan. Oh, dinner's ready. Call her Satan, baby, because she had reflux and colic from pretty much the time that she was born. So she has done a lot of screaming and we've done a lot of crying and she's done a lot of screaming, but it's all worth it. Because we're going to have another one. One and done. No? Okay. We'll, we'll touch on that one later then. Um, as I was saying, pregnancy-wise, I was pretty cool with her up until 34 weeks. I went yes. in for a routine scan and they found that Amelia had jumped, uh, not jumped, she had dropped from the 30th percentile. 40th. 40th percentile. My memory is short. Oh, I can't swear. Sorry. Um, really bad. It's really, really bad. At the moment. Um, so she dropped from the 40th percentile down to the 8th percentile for her age. And she's vomited. 
Nice. Lovely. Yeah. Um, so I was put on observations every day for a week. I had an appointment with the head obstetrician at 36 weeks and she was born at 37 weeks via a balloon induction, which PS, I am never, ever, 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 doing ever doing again. Um, it sucked my body. They're not sure that it was because of all of my internal problems. Just did not cope with that induction at all. I had contraction on top of contraction. I hadn't dilated. I begged for a cesarean and they actually agreed to it, which I was internally going, thank you. I don't want to feel this anymore. I just want her out. Um, within a minute of the nurse walking out and my leg going on the bed, my water broke and my beautiful darling daughter began her journey into the world. And 17 and a half hours later, she was born. Um, I guess the only other real problem I had during my pregnancy was my progesterone did drop a few times. So they had to up my medication and I developed I can't quite remember where that cut out. Luke and I have been standing here debating, going, I think it was this. And I'm like, no, I think it was that. So basically, I think I was up to pup syndrome. So basically what that is, is it's a hormonal rash that covers your entire body. And there is literally nothing that they can give you to help. I was on creams. I had, hi. I had um, a lot of cold showers. And I tried to not really scratch because that would make it worse and it was it would spread. Um, I did briefly mention before that M has colic and reflux, which as first time parents, I don't think we were quite expecting that to happen. No, especially because M did have to spend about eight days in the special care nursery because she was born not that small, but she was tiny. Um, she had an infection, which they had to put on antibiotics for. So when we were with her, she was always the quietest little thing in the incubator. And it was <gasps> like, oh, what just happened? She <laughs> okay. Um, so she was the quietest one. So we were like, oh, we got lucky. We were really wrong. So if, very, very, wrong. <laughs> very wrong. So if it wasn't for, I know, um, a lot of our close friends, our family, who would come over and sit with us while we sat there and went, what did we do? What are we meant to do next? I think it's so important to have such a strong community behind any first time mum and dad. I mean, everyone worries about mums. What are you laughing at? Mums all over me. Oh. And Re the floor. Re And the what? And the floor. And the floor. Oh, okay. We're going to go have some dinner and then if you guys have any questions more specifically for the IVF part, um, I'll put a little question box and I'll get back to you when M gets put to bed because I just need five minutes. Okay, bye. Okay.